Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a book review, a play review, I'm not really too sure what to call this, but basically I'm reviewing Harry Potter and the Cursed Child Parts 1 and Part 2 by J.K. Rowling, John Tiffany and Jack Fawn. This is the script of the play that is currently in London at the minute, hopefully to go around the rest of the world. The eighth book in the Harry Potter story set 19 years later. I was super excited to get this, I got this on release day, I read it on release day and I had a lot of feelings about this, some good and some not so good. I'm going to quickly say that I did love revisiting the characters and this world and just being at Hogwarts again and I'm grateful that I have it but I did have some issues with it so I'm going to talk about them. So if you do not want to be spoiled, if you haven't read this yet, go read it and then come back because we're going to talk about spoilers. First off, the main thing that really bugged me about this book is when it is revealed that Ron was really drunk for his wedding, so much so that he can't even remember his wedding. That is ridiculous to me. I don't think Ron is the type of person to be drunk at his own wedding. And I also don't think Hermione would have allowed him to do that. Like, I feel like she would have been like, Ron, stop it. Like, just magic the alcohol away. Why was he that drunk that he can't remember it? I, I don't see Ron that way at all. In fact, a lot of the characters to me acted in ways that didn't feel true to the characters themselves. Now obviously things have changed, it's 20 years later or something like that, but still I don't think the characters that we know and love would have done the things or acted the way they did in certain scenes in here. For example, Cedric. First of all, what, what was with the whole importance of Cedric in this book? I don't know, I don't understand. It's been years, it's been literally years since Cedric has died and I don't get the importance of Cedric. Like suddenly his father comes back and is like, bring him back to life life and Harry's like no like I can't do that and Albus decides well hey that's a perfect idea let me get my pal Scorpius and we'll go and do that and it's just like such an importance like Harry's obviously still not over it and he like he goes back and revisits the grave and I'm just like why? I don't know, a lot's changed and I don't feel like there should have been such an importance on Cedric Diggory. I don't understand it, I don't really get it, but sure, whatever, I guess that's the way we're going, so let's just go with it. And the boys decide that one of the ways, you know, to save Cedric is to humiliate him. Can't say that word. But, you know, they're going to embarrass him and then he'll pull out of the task and everything like that. And so they go back in time and embarrass him so much that he becomes so embarrassed that he becomes a Death Eater and is like so jaded that he becomes a Death Eater. And I'm sorry, but no, Cedric is not that person to done that, especially not just from being embarrassed, you know, that wouldn't have caused Cedric to become a Death Eater. It seems ridiculous. I don't think he would. And he killed Neville Longbottom. I'm sorry. No. Cedric is such a kind person. He's a Hufflepuff. A Hufflepuff. I, I, I can't see at all in any world, no matter what would have happened of Cedric becoming a Death Eater and killing Neville. I just, I can't see it. Like, as I said, these characters act so differently to the characters that we knew and loved. It's just, it's strange. Ron, for example, seemed to be in here for comic relief. And Ron is not my favourite character, but I still do enjoy him, but I definitely think he's more than comic relief than this book just kind of made him out to be. Also, Ron gave Albus a love potion, which no, Ron wouldn't have done that. Ron got basically date raped by a love potion back at Hogwarts himself, and I don't think he would have thought, oh, do you know what, let me give Albus a love potion. I don't think Ron would have done that. Yeah, I just, I don't see it happening. Also, as you can tell, I've just kind of got like a series of notes of what I've written, so just little dot points, so this is going to like be in no complete order they're just my thoughts at the time of writing them down of the main things that I wanted to talk about and discuss so to me the whole story seems really pointless we just kind of go back in time a couple of times nothing really happens we kind of see these alternate time realities and then we go back I mean Elvis and Harry kind of connect better and that's the end like nothing though consequential happens in this really at all there's no importance to the story there's no nothing we really learn new about the world except for Voldemort's love child which I will discuss later and trust me I have stuff to say but there's nothing really important that happens in here and that was a letdown I would have preferred a story that had more importance or like something that was consequential this wasn't consequential like we just went back in time a lot like it, it wasn't important and just me stories that are just kind of pointless are a little bit of let down so this was for me a let down in that way okay so I guess now this is the perfect time to discuss Voldemort's love child with Bellatrix I mean why Alright, so th to me this read a lot like fanfiction, it really did and the main thing that was most fanfiction-y for me was Voldemort's love child with Bellatrix. I mean her name's Delphi for one, does the fanfiction My Immortal ring anything to you? I mean come on, no, no, no. And apparently this child was born somewhere before the Battle of Hogwarts, like why? 
first off, why? Why would Voldemort allow Bellatrix to become pregnant? Like, I, I think Voldemort would have been like, no. And then if Bellatrix would have hidden it, but I don't think she could have hidden it well. So I feel like Voldemort would have like killed the baby. And I don't think he would have had an issue with that at all. Like Voldemort wouldn't want a child and he believed that he was going to win this battle. So I don't think he wanted a child at all or to carry on his legacy because he thought he was going to win. So I just don't see that happening. And it really makes me wonder how much of this JK Rowling actually wrote because I feel like, as I said, you know, there are things that the characters just do or doesn't make sense to the world. And I feel like, you know, JK was like, yeah, just, just write it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds good. But I feel like because of that, we kind of missed out on things and the characters and what they would have really truly done. Like, I feel like they weren't them true selves. Like, Voldemort wouldn't have had a child. Come on. Voldemort would have killed that thing. He doesn't want a child. He wouldn't have wanted a child. And the whole Dougie thing was just ridiculous. And it's so fan fiction-y. I'm sorry, but Bellatrix and Voldemort having a child is fan fiction, guys. Fan fiction. Harry was another character that really acted unlike himself. I mean, he tells Albus that he wished some days that he had never been his dad. And I'm sorry, I can't see Harry doing that at all. Harry, who grew up as an orphan and cherished his fatherly figures and knew how important fatherly figures were, I don't see him at all saying something that horrible no matter what the circumstance and even the thing of what it says it wasn't even that bad i don't understand it just it really blew my mind of what harry did also the whole thing when harry's like i've been told that there's like a bad like you know circle around you elvis so I'm going to ban you from seeing Scorpius because obviously that's him. But yeah, I just don't feel like Harry had such good friendships. Like he would have realized how important friendships were. I don't think Harry would have done that. And then he came down to McGonagall and was like, you have to separate them. Here is this map. If you see them together, go stop them from being together. Like McGonagall was obviously uncomfortable. She didn't want to do it. And he's like, if you don't do this, I will come down with the full force on the ministry on top of you. And I was just like, WTF? No, what? That's not Harry. I don't see it at all in Harry. And oh, it, it made me frustrated and angry. Also, Scorpius and Albus, especially Albus, was in some ways dumber than the OG crew were. I mean, they did some dumb shit. They were going to turn back time so much to save Cedric Diggory. Like, do they not understand the consequences of that? It, it made no sense and I didn't like it. And I was like, no, no. Why is this a thing? Why are they so dumb? But I also really appreciate Scorpius. Scorpius, my baby. Scorpius is Albus's relationship was very homosexual and you can deny it, but it, it was. I mean, they basically say to each other that people say they can't live without each other. When Scorpius is thinking of his most like happiest thoughts, it's Albus. It, it seems very homosexual. And yeah, I really liked Scorpius and Rose together and think they're a really nice couple. But also, I mean, there's something there between Albus and Scorpius. And I mean, I'm not one of those ones who'd be like, oh, two boys together, they're together. Like, I was never a Draco and Harry shipper. But I mean, there was something there. And... You, you can't deny that. This this was more than the, the best friendship, or at least more than any best friendship that I've ever, you know, seen or heard of. Also, just a brief mention to Voldemort Day. That was ridiculous. Umbridge being ridiculous, but also I was like, how come we never saw the other Scorpius in that world when he goes back in time? We only see that Scorpius. Like, where was his other self? We know that when you time turn, you will have two of yourselves. You have your previous and your current self, but where was the previous Scorpius? We never saw him. It really confused me and like, I mean, time travel's rules broken? I don't know, maybe I missed something. Please tell me if I did, but that was like, uh, what? where is he? I don't understand. Also, I just like to say rest in peace to the other characters, such as Teddy, such as Rose and Lily and James, who we never really saw much, which I would have loved to see even just a little bit more of them. I mean, we saw a little Rose, but pretty much other than that, we really didn't get to see these other characters and I would have loved to, and it, it disappoints me, but as I said, I, I still really did like Elvis and Scorpius as characters. But to me, yeah, the whole thing really seemed very fan fiction -y, and I'm honestly not gonna consider this canon. It was really nice, as I said, revisiting the world and the characters again, and I flew through this, but it's it's not canon. There are many faults within the time turn of world. I mean, the characters act without themselves. It just seems like a fan fiction, and not even a great one. I mean, I liked this book, but it, it definitely didn't hold up to the standards that the other Harry Potter books were at. And I'm I'm sorry, but that that's the way I feel. I still did really enjoy it. I will love anything Harry Potter that comes out, but 
to me this was such a disappointment for the way it kind of felt it cheapened and it felt like it did a lot of things for the fans and I don't feel like when things do that then it's very true to the world or to the story. Obviously you can love it you can rate this book five out of five stars I think it's the best thing in the world and that's fine you're entitled to your opinion. Me though it just it didn't get there. I rated this book in the end a three and a half out of five stars and I still think I'm being generous it's free on Goodreads. I don't know I liked it but as I said it's not canon to me and I mean a lot of people are feeling that way for the reasons I've said and other reasons. So do let me know in the comments below what you thought of it, whether you loved it, whether you hated it, whether you thought it was okay, whether you liked it, whatever. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it. Please put spoilers in the comments below if you're going to discuss something in particular so people know so they don't look in the comments. But yeah. Okay so slight update because the angling may have changed. I'm actually filming this small section later in the day because I realised a couple of things. Number one, the doorbell rang later after I'd filmed this and guess what came in the mail? This. You see, ages ago, I requested this for review, didn't think anything of it, totally forgot about thought, I'm not gonna get that for review, and went out and bought myself a copy. Turns out, I did get it for review. I can't remember the publishing company that sent this to me. I think it was Hatchet Australia. I'll leave it a little link below, so thank you very much Hatchet Australia for sending me this my way. I totally didn't expect you to, so now I have two copies. But that's okay. I will definitely find the use for the other copy. But that does in no way change the fact that this is a Honor's review, and so I'm going to be talking about the things that I liked and disliked in this. But I realised I kind of talked a lot about the things that I didn't like, and nothing about the things I liked, but yet I rated it a three and a half three stars even though I said I was being generous and rating it three and a half I think the three star rating is pretty good I think that that's pretty where I stand so if I rate it three stars what what did I like about this number one I guess the main thing is that we revisited this world this world that I have grown up with that was my childhood that still is that Harry Potter is a part of me and it will never leave me. So revisiting this and getting this and seeing the characters again, it is magical. Did it live up to my expectations? No. But did it have some of that magic? Yes. Strangely, yes. I was revisiting the characters that I loved and even though at times they acted so differently, they were still the characters that I loved. And I was able to fall in love with specifically two new characters that I really did like and that is Elvis and Scorpius. Elvis was a little bit of a shitbag sometimes, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes I'd be really frustrated at him but Scorpius? I, I really liked Scorpius. Oh, whoever thought that I could love Malfoy's son as much as I do. Scorpius and Elvis are just perfect two together too. Like by themselves they're kind of like eh but together they're amazing and I really loved seeing their friendship grow. I also enjoyed revisiting Snape, why I found that whole situation ridiculous. It was just nice to see him. He was never my favorite character, but it was nice to see him in an alternate reality where he was alive. Even though that reality was very horrible, it was nice to see him alive. I also think that this would work much better as a play for the example of things that you just don't see. In here, things that you read and you're like, I wonder how they did that, this is a play. Or how'd they make that work? And like, it just might be something that's not included in here, but it's shown in the play form I think that I still really want to see this as a play I think it would be a lot better as a play you miss out JK Rowling's writing in this it's, it's script format so even if she did write some of it because we have to remember there are three authors attached to this book you miss out on the way she weaves together a sentence and as it's a script it, it doesn't really work like that I guess as much so yeah I'm gonna go now and let you get back to past Becca talking about uh, her thoughts of why she did not like this book. But yeah, as I said, I have mixed feelings about this book. I liked it and I didn't like it, but I focused mainly on the things that I didn't like because I really wanted to love this book. So it, it was a letdown for me, I'm not gonna lie. It, it was a letdown, but I still enjoyed my time reading it. But I'm still definitely not considering it canon and I still do think it, it was fan fiction. Those are my thoughts of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Let me know in the comments below if you liked this review, like this video if you liked it, and I will see you guys next time. Okay, bye.